Welcome to part three of lecture five of aerospace propulsion. So now let's map these five desired traits to some geometric uh, features. Uh, so we can get high volumetric efficiency by having a large valve surface area, right? In other words, making it easy for flow to get in and out of the cylinders. We can achieve low heat transfer loss by keeping a low surface to volume ratio, right? Minimizing the surface area as well as um, by putting the exhaust valve uh, right next to the spark. We can have high ignition reliability from doing that too. We can get high flame speed by inducing turbulence inside the cylinders, as well as doing something called adding swish area, and we'll talk a little bit about what that is in a minute. And we can avoid knock by minimizing how far the flame has to travel. Here's some examples of combustion chamber features. Um, if we want to achieve that minimized surface to volume ratio, we could have something that looks like this, where it's centered, there's sort of nothing but piston and valve. So there's, there's sort of not at the uh, minimum volume, there's not really any sort of a other area directly exposed to the, the engine block. The squish area we see in examples B and C here. Um, these are essentially designs where when the piston moves all the way up, um, the flow is for or the, the gas is forced into oops, the gas is forced into a region that um, has less than the, uh, the cross sectional area of the piston, essentially. Um, so we see that here, there's sort of a little side chamber that the flow gets squished into here. It's just compressed into a region between the valve um, and the spark plug, but doesn't sort of go all the way over here. And here's some ex an example of putting the exhaust valve right next to the spark plug here and here. So what we're trying to do in these different cases is essentially um, make sure the gas is moving around and mixing well. Um, and the reason for this is we really need to use the, to generate turbulence in order to increase the uh, gas burning rate in spark ignition engines. The problem is that fundamentally the speed at which the, uh, a flame wants to move uh, in a pre-mixed uh, air fuel mixture is pretty slow. It's on the order of about a half a meter a second. And so we need to burn way faster to, for the, basically the combustion to keep up with the rate at which things are moving in the spark ignition engine. So we do use turbulence to enhance this. So just to give you a sense, right, um, if here's sort of different RPM values, and based on that, the time available for combustion, uh, and, yet, and that translates to a required flame propagation speed. Um, and so the ratio of the required speed to the laminar flame speed, um, you know, even at 1,000 RPM is a factor, more than a factor of 10, and that more practical values of two to 4,000 RPM is in the range of 25 to 50 times um, faster, right? So here to calculate this, we sort of made a couple of assumptions that it takes 50 degrees of crank angle rotation to do the combustion event and a cylinder bore um, of a certain size. Um, but what's important to take away here is that at practical engine operating speeds, we need, uh, you know, on the order of 20 uh, to 50 times enhancement of flame speed compared to just the laminar flame speed value. So let's take a little bit of time to talk about the behavior of turbulence in these IC engine cylinders. Um, so the turbulence is generated due to the flow through the intake valves, um, right? When the, where the flow is coming out of the valves, that generates some turbulence as well as the movement of the piston, right? During the compression stroke though, the turbulence decays. Essentially, um, when you're doing that compression, uh, you are decreasing the maximum possible size of turbulent eddies and this rapidly forces the turbulence to decay. And so the, one of the reasons that we use those squish areas we saw earlier is to enhance the uh, turbulence because when the flow, not, it's not when the flow gets squished into that, but when it comes back out that uh, we get the generation of some turbulence similar to what happens when the flow is coming in through the valves. So we can look at the effects of turbulence um, as well as compression ratio here, um, right? If we, we know from cycle uh, analysis that increasing the compression ratio ought to increase our overall efficiency, 
Um, and what enhancing the turbulence really does it extend, is it extends the operational limits of the engine. So here are sort of right here's the ideal auto cycle, uh, which of course rises forever uh, with compression ratio. Um, the mechanical efficiency though starts going down, right? They're, the faster things uh, are moving and the um, more compression that occurs, the mechanical efficiency does tend to drop. So the combined efficiency has a peak at some, some compression ratio um, and uh, sort of driving that higher is sort of one of the main ways that engines have become more efficient over time. Uh, but essentially by, by decreasing these mechanical losses. Um, now in terms of how this uh, interfaces with uh, the operational limits of the engine, we can sort of see three um, curves here. So for the moment, uh, let's say, let's just look at the solid lines. Um, so there's this one, this one, and this one. And essentially this area in between all three is where we can safely operate the engine. So ranges of equivalence ratio and compression ratio where the engine is going to operate properly. Um, and what we can see is that by having high turbulence, we push the knock limit to higher compression ratios. We push the lean burn limit to lower equivalence ratio, and we push the rich burn limit to a higher equivalence ratio. So we enhance the overall operating uh, region for the engine based on having high in-cylinder turbulence. So the big question is, what's the impact in terms of the physical mechanism? So why does the high turbulence enhance the operating range of an internal combustion engine? So think about this question for a couple minutes and try to come up with your own answer before you move on to the next part of the video.